On the heels of the civil rights movement in 1971, President Richard Nixon proposed a five-fold increase in federal spending for sickle cell research. Forty years and a billion dollars later, a lot has been accomplished, especially for children. Those who typically died by age 14 now live into their 40s and beyond. Community outreach, screening, genetic counseling, and treatments to manage complications have all expanded. But many physicians remain frustrated that more hasn't been done. For starters, there's only one FDA-approved drug. You know, we're living in the 21st century, and yet in the last 100 plus years since we've known about sickle cell disease, we have one medicine. So what does that tell you? That tells me that this healthcare disparity needs to stop. Money is a big part of the problem. An article six years ago in the journal Pediatrics has become a springboard of discussion about inequities. It compared funding levels by NIH, the government's main funder of medical research, between sickle cell disease and cystic fibrosis in 2004. Both are serious genetic diseases associated with shortened lifespans. Sickle cell disease, by some estimates, affects as many as 100,000 Americans, while cystic fibrosis affects about 30,000. Yet cystic fibrosis got more funding, four times more on a per-person basis. The inequity has continued. Sickle cell disease is the most common genetic disorder in the United States, and yet the amount of support that uh, sickle cell disease gets um, is significantly less um, than other genetic disorders uh, that are much, much less common. In the fierce competition for research funding, advocates for many conditions feel shortchanged. It often comes down to who has the best organization and clout. Many patients with sickle cell are poor, minorities, and lack influence. Because of socioeconomics, the lobby uh, that, that advocates for research, for progress, is not a strong one. And this also has a major impact on funding levels. Uh, so there's, there's clearly, without doubt, there is a socioeconomic aspect to sickle cell disease. The article in Pediatrics also examines the role of race, stating, quote, as a country, we continue to struggle with the implication of past and present racial bias for health. Besides inequity in funding, there are problems delivering care to sickle cell patients, particularly young adults. There's a shortage of sickle cell specialists. Ongoing treatment is often fragmented. The healthcare system is hard to navigate and many lack insurance. One consequence of all this is that many patients do not seek medical attention until they're in dire straits. They head to the emergency room in search of narcotics for pain. Pain that can be as severe as that of a broken bone, but not as obvious. It can be a confusing situation for medical staff and result in undertreatment. One of the things that doctors and nurses are looking for are patients to demonstrate pain behaviors that's appropriate for the amount of pain they're having. Somebody that's grown up with pain their entire life has learned to compensate for that pain, and so typically they will not show those kinds of pain behaviors. On top of all these challenges, there are communication problems caused by differences in race and or culture. To stay out of these emergency room scenarios, sickle cell patients need quality ongoing care. But in 2010, Arthur Brown found himself missing just that. He became unemployed, lost his health insurance, stopped going for his monthly blood transfusions, and became deathly ill with pneumonia. Brown ended up in Akron General's intensive care unit, on a ventilator in a medically induced coma, fighting for his life. Would he wake up? You know, I was worried about being in like that, would he wake up? Would they be able to bring him out of it? That's the moment, like, when I actually realized how much I really did love him. And I, um, I just wanted to be with him no matter what. So I was there for him. And I came off the ventilator, and I was like, well, I mean, that was pretty much it right there. Like, that's the closest I've ever been to actually dying. So it's like, man, this, uh, 
I'm, I'm straight. <laughs> I was like, I don't think it could get much worse. Hopefully it doesn't. But um, to me, it's like I've been there and back now. These days, Arthur Brown has a full-time job working for the Cleveland Clinic reading EKGs for heart disease patients. He feels blessed to be back on his regimen of monthly blood transfusions. His pain attacks now come less frequently, and he usually only ends up in the hospital once a year. Someday, Brown and his wife hope to have children. Chardet was tested for the sickle cell trait and came up negative. That means there's no risk that any children they have will have sickle cell anemia. I was going to listen to you. Brown hopes the next generation of children growing up with sickle cell anemia will learn from his experience, one that leaves him able to call the disease both a curse and a gift. All the sickness, and the weakness, the fatigue, but I also view it as you know, a gift too because it lets people see that you, know, uh, you can get through things. Here's a few things to remember if you're African American or part of another population group at risk for sickle cell anemia. Know your trait status and discuss it with your partner before having children. Consider giving blood because there's need for more diversity among blood donors. And remember, sickle cell anemia is not a death sentence. Thanks to advances, many patients are now living decades longer. But there's still a lot left to be done. To learn more about sickle cell anemia as well as other blood problems, visit our website at health.ideastream.org. There you'll find a multimedia collection of stories about blood, including a web exclusive video about dangerous blood clots that can travel to the lungs causing sudden death. View special content provided by our partner, Net Wellness, a consumer health website offered as a public service from Case Western Reserve University, the University of Cincinnati, and The Ohio State University. Go to health.ideastream.org for About Blood, a collection of radio, web, and television resources. Funding for About Blood, Sickle Cell Anemia comes from the Dr. Donald J. Goodman and Ruth Weber Goodman Philanthropic Fund of the Cleveland Foundation, the Margaret Clark Morgan Foundation, the McGregor Foundation, the Woodruff Foundation, and the Community Foundation of Lorain County.